today I'm going to show you how you can install several new hard drives into a laptop. Basically all the options of where you can place new hard drives and how to do it. Let's go! So here we have the laptop. Of course, we'll need to first begin with flipping the laptop over. To access the hard drives, you'll need to open up the service compartment of your laptop. On this Acer laptop, it's located here. They may be located on different places on different laptops, and some laptops, like small laptops, doesn't have a service compartment. In that case, you'll need to open up the entire back case of the computer, which means remove all the screws. But for most computers, we'll have a service compartment. We'll remove the three screws uh, keeping this in place, and then we will open it up. There we have the last one. And we can now carefully pry this open here. Like that. And we can put it to the side. Here we'll have the M.2 drive as well as the RAM sticks. Now I already have my M.2 drive installed, but I'm going to show you how to remove it and put it back again. We'll need a screwdriver and we will just open this up here until it gets released, just carefully remove it. So here we have the M.2 drive. We can then carefully drag it out. Here we have it, we'll extract the M.2 drive. To install an M.2 drive, you'll do the same thing. We'll see a little small compartment here, and on the motherboard it should say M.2 somewhere. On laptops like this it may be a little bit unclear. If you don't have a M.2 drive compartment anywhere inside your laptop, um, you will unfortunately won't be able to use the M.2 uh, uh, setup like this. In that case you'll need to buy an adapter to SATA and use it as a SATA hard drive. Anyways, we have M.2 on this one, so of course we'll just insert it. All the way in like that. Then we just push it down gently until we can see where we put the screw. Imagine that many gigabytes in such a small stick. This is like 200 and this is like 8 and this is still smaller. Kind of incredible. Alright, it's securely secured. When you have installed an M.2 drive, it's much faster than any other type of drive. You'll naturally want to move all your uh, softwares and Windows installation over to it. And if you want to know how to do that, you can watch my tutorial on how to move everything to uh, another drive. How to copy from HDD to SSD, but it of course works from another SSD to another SSD. And M.2 drives is a type of SSD solid state drives. And here we have the empty hard drive compartment. Now this computer already uses an SSD, an M.2 drive right here. Uh, but we will of course input a, another hard drive into this system right here. So um, here we have the hard drive of choice and we're going to install it there. If you'll just insert it, you will kind of see that uh, while we can have it here, it's kind of a little bit loose like this, and that is absolutely not acceptable. What you can do, or should do, whoops, um, is to have one of these. This is a little uh, tray that we can put the drive in, and it will put it more securely inside this space. So we will put our hard drive into this one. But uh, let's say you don't have one of those cases and you will not want to go and buy one and you'll in use your hard drive anyways. Well, while I don't recommend this, I'm going to show you how to do the best you can. Here we have some packing foam. 
and I've cut up some special pieces from this packing foam. What we will do is to have one of these little here, so it kind of rests securely and gets into level. Then we're going to put a little smaller one on this side and one on this side and lastly we'll put the big piece here and make sure it uh, sits firmly and it can't move around too much. Now uh, this is absolutely not the best or recommended solution but there you go that's how I did it before but now I finally got one of these trays so I shall use it. Right take the little tray and put the drive securely in it. Then we'll have four screws, so two on each side. So just fasten all of the four screws like this and I'll do the rest of them like that. You may buy these little trays from a hardware store, online or even you can recycle them from an old laptop like I did for this one for example. And now we have this little tray connected up like that and push it down. And now you can see it uh, lays much more securely but even though I have this little tray it's not perfect uh, but it's better. So I'm going to complement with my little foam here. Like that. So we have uh, much less chance of it actually disconnecting itself if the computer takes a hit. But very nice, it uh, lays firmly and nice. So now we have successfully installed this little rive. Now we may just uh, put back this panel, um, put the screws in again and uh, we are done with inserting this hard drive. To utilize the DVD player as a hard drive disk storage uh, area, you will need a specific part that's called a HDD CADU. Now you can find uh, these installation frames uh, on hardware stores. I bought mine on a hardware store. You can get them on eBay. There is also a specialized uh, site that's like hddcaddy.com or something. Not an affiliate. But um, they can offer like specific sizes if you have a very weird kind of laptop. The general HDD CAD is cheaper and uh, works for most laptops, including this one. And uh, just to utilize a HDD caddy, you don't actually need a disc player. You just need the space for a disc player. Now, my computer doesn't have a DVD, a Blu-ray drive or something like that. It only has empty space. But it has the expansion capabilities is actually the only thing that matters. Here you can see this little thing here. We have a little lid. You can remove this. You can see the area where your disc player is. If you actually have a disc player here, it's uh, much more defined and easy to understand. Now, one screw is holding this thing inside the computer. It's usually located around here. It's not usually one of the deep ones, but one uh, kind of misplaced, or almost looked like, uh, surface screw like this one. And this is the screw we'll need to remove to extract the uh, driver player or the plastic little piece in my, uh, in my case. Now the screw is carefully removed and we can carefully drag out this plastic piece or drive player. So that's what it looked like in my case. We don't need that anymore. Now here we have the HDD caddy which is the thing we will replace the drive with. We can just open it up and you can see the shape similarity straight away. Here we have some uh, screws, nice, and uh, some uh, covering panel. However, you can use your old covering panel uh, in almost all cases, which is this one. And we have some instructions here too that you might want to use. Right, so here we have this little piece of plastic. It's basically all what it is, a kind of adapter. And here we have our drive. 
So, to insert this drive, we'll just align up the connections. You can see a small a little input there and a small a little connection there. So we'll just uh, angle them down like this and just push in and then down and just see if it's all the way in. And now you can see it's securely attached. Fantastic. Now we can flip this thing over because we will need to attach the screws. I find it easiest to first attach the screw onto the screwdriver and then kind of aim it in there. And the other side. Or just make sure you screw them in all the way. There we go. There we go. All the screws securely attached right there. Right, before we put it back again, you can see the different sizes here. They are kind of the same. Now this one lacks a piece that this one lacks, and that's this little thing. So we'll just need to remove this little thing here. There we go. And the other one. And place it on the HDD Caddy, because um, it has the same type of mount, mount on itself, so it's really nice. Right, we are reusing the metal piece, of course, but we need to use the uh, new screws provided with the HDD Caddy, because the old screws are too short for this. Alright, like this. It is now secured. We may now proceed and insert this into the system. Alright, there we are. Now we can proceed to insert this into the system. And this was the original orientation of the old one, so we'll use the same. And we'll insert it here. And we're going to push it straight in, just like that. Straight in. And if you push it straight, it should connect without any issues. And there we have the little screw hole that keeps it in place. So we should insert a screw here and fasten the uh, HD caddy. All the way down like that. Now the HDD caddy was provided with a little panel with a button and a little hole for a LED light so it would kind of look like a regular uh, CD-ROM drive but um, if you have and can just stick with the old piece like that. Just looks much better. So we now have inserted the HDD caddy successfully with a hard drive into the computer. And of course to actually use the disk, maybe you'll use it yourself or someone else will use it, you will need to go to disk management and you right click on the windows icon and you just click disk management. Alright, so here you can see uh, we get this little prompt, initialize disk. Um, and if you get this little prompt, you of course need to select something. Now, MBR is pretty ancient. GPT is the kind of new one and is uh, required for most new drives. But if you're gonna use this on a really old uh, Windows system, you might change it to MBR. But generally, GPT is the way to go for basically everyone. So just select OK. Now the disk is uh, initialized and to start using this you'll need to right click on it and select new simple volume. Here you get this nice little wizard. Uh, so we'll just click next and if this is a regular hard drive max this out. If it's an SSD uh, remove about 10% from this so we have 10% uh, unallocated space minimum or 20% and your SSD will live longer. But for HDD, use all the space, click next. You can assign a letter to the drive. Uh, you can select any letter you want. Don't do anything with this uh, information there, just go to the next one and uh, format this volume using NTFS, XFAT, you can use it on some other systems as well, like Mac, but NTFS is the regular normal thing that you want to have for uh, Windows drives. 
Now allocation unit size, if you're going to have only media files or something on this one, you can set it to the maximum, otherwise just keep it on default. Default is best for most people. And then you can of course name the volume something. I'm going to call this uh, Magazinet, because why not? So now you can do you can select to not do a quick format but you might as well do a quick format if it would fail try to uncheck it but it usually doesn't fail like ever so just do quick format and click next and then just finish and uh, congratulations this is formatting and now it's all right so uh, we can actually browse this drive now and use it normally. It's uh, completely fantastic. You successfully initialized the drive and you can now, I don't know, use it. And there we successfully booted up our PC. And if you kind of have problems booting, you might need to go, to go into BIOS. Uh, on screen when you start your computer, it uh, prompts you to press a special key to get into BIOS and you go into there and you change the boot order if you for example have an old windows install or something on one of the hard drives you inserted and you haven't cleaned the drive prior to installing them and there you can see we have uh, all our three drives working as perfectly fantastic everything works well thanks a lot for watching i hope this tutorial has been useful for you and if it was Please leave a like and do comment if anything below the comments uh, if you have any questions or new videos you want to see. In any case, do stay tuned, that means subscribe, and I'll see you in future videos. This is your host, Jim Odessen, signing out.